good morning. Uh, my name is Bharat Kamdar and I'm with Ingenious Inc. And today we are going to look at a demo for one of our products called Prodyne. To start, I'm going to click on a icon here called Prodyne Dispatcher. <coughs> As Prodyne Dispatcher loads, you see that on the left side we have the entire collection of all the dynamic simulation models that are available on this particular system that I'm using. Uh, for each model, as I select different models, you see that on the right side uh, you see a complete list of all the pre-programmed initial conditions called snapshots that are available for that model. So if for any particular model if you have multiple snapshots available then they would all be listed on this side. Uh, it looks like for most of these models you have two initial conditions or two snapshots that are available at this point. In general we provide two snapshots that are those are pre-programmed and protected uh, typically one would be a cold start and the other one would be steady state the cold start would represent the plant startup conditions uh, from where you can actually take over the operation of the plant and resume uh, the startup procedure and take it all the way to the normal operating conditions the steady state snapshot represents the normal operating condition uh, so you can go straight to the normal condition of the plant without going through the plant startup procedures so for all these models as you see on the left side you would typically have these two snapshots that are pre-programmed protected and provided by us but along the way you could be making additional snapshots and if you have those then they would show up here as well okay so for this uh, demo what I'm going to do is select uh, a relatively simple model for the demo uh, and I'm selecting something called basic control module uh, model B1 and for this model I see that there are two snapshots again as I said before I will select the steady snapshot and start. While the model is starting, I wanted to point out the fact that the list of models uh, on the left side of Prodyne Dispatcher could be a mix of dynamic simulation models that are developed in different simulation engines. Uh, in this model, in this uh, system, uh, we have a collection of models that are developed in uh, Unisim, uh, HiSys, uh, CADSIM as well as ChemCAD. Prodyne is a OPC compliant product and it can use any OPC compliant simulation engine. Uh, so that's the beauty of uh, Prodyne where it, it's not really simulation engine dependent okay so what has just happened is the model has loaded the title of the model is introduction to process control its model B1 okay so what just happened is we have just loaded the model it's called introduction to process control it's a relatively simple process and I will go over the process with you in a minute the model is loaded in a frozen condition meaning the plant is actually loaded but it is not running so as soon as I click on this run button the plant will start running like a real plant and the dynamic response that I would see from here on would be like what I would expect to see in the real plant okay um, so at this point the plant is running and what I wanted to do 
is go over various features of Prodyne. But just before I do that, let me uh, quickly review the process with you. It's a simple process. Uh, it's a water loop. Uh, you start from this tank. Uh, this tank has a level controller. Uh, from there, you can go into another tank, which does not have a controller. It's just a floating level. From there, you can go to the suction of the two pumps. There are two pumps here, each one with a suction valve and a discharge valve. Uh, from this discharge of the two pumps, you can go back to the tank if you want, or you go through a heater. This is an electric heater, uh, and on the downstream of the electric heater, we have a temperature controller. So, so far, what has happened is we have the water coming in from the tanks through the pumps, through the heater, where I can raise the temperature to a certain temperature, certain degree, and then I have a cooler here, E101. So, I raise the temperature and then I bring the temperature back to what it was in the beginning. So. It's just a closed loop with a couple of different temperature controllers. One to raise the temperature uh, after the heater and the other one to cool the temperature to its normal value after the cooler. Uh, we also have a flow controller uh, that controls the flow through the loop. Uh, of course, the level controller maintains the level in this, uh, this tank T102. So that uh, is the process. Uh, as I said before, the the plant is running. So if I was to uh, do something to the plant, for example, uh, change the set point on this controller, uh, the level controller, I should be able to change the set point on this LIC 102. And what I expect to see is a correct dynamic response. So. This is a typical faceplate on a controller. Uh, it gives you options of uh, 2 minutes of trending, or 5 minutes of trending, or 10 minutes, or 20 minutes. Uh, while you are trending, you have process variable, set point, as well as output. All three of them are being trended. However, if you clicked on PV, then you will see the range of that PV on the left side. If you clicked on set point, then you would see the range of that, that particular variable. Well, it just turns out that in this case, the PV, the set point, and output, all of them have the same range. So they go from 0 to 100%. But you know, it's possible that uh, PV and set point have different ranges uh, from the, the output. Output is almost always 0 to 100%. So we are looking at uh, a trend here of uh, PV, set point, and uh, output. The controller is in automatic. Uh, I, I can simply change it from manual to auto and auto to manual simply by clicking on this. It is in automatic, so now I can change the set point from 50 to let's say 75. And from this moment on, uh, the controller is supposed to do its thing. Uh, it would take the necessary action. Uh, in this case, change the controller output so that the level would start to increase. And the way the level will increase is if this wall would close. So you would take out less water from the tank that would allow the level to go up. So it's a typical, straightforward level controller. Nothing fancy there at all. You see that the, the blue here is the set point that was uh, raised from 50 to 75%. The green is the actual level that is slowly but surely going up. And as soon as I've changed the set point, the controller started ac taking action. And the output is has decreased and continues to decrease uh, uh, to bring the level to uh, the new set point of 75. So uh, this will continue. You know, uh, while we are on the controller faceplate, just wanted to point out some other uh, things here. Uh, this is a zoom box feature that uh, allows you to put a uh, uh, box around a particular part of the trending and you can actually expand or, or focus on a particular region of trend. Anyway, uh, so as I said, uh, you can have trending in different uh, time base. Uh, you can trend anything you want. You can zoom in and zoom out. 
as well as you can control the PID settings uh, controller tuning constants are also available here and you can actually uh, change the controller tuning and the, the controller would react um, uh, in uh, to the new set of uh, tuning constants alright so uh, to demonstrate the dynamics of this process we had changed the set point of this controller from 50 to 75 percent and the controller ultimately will settle down at 75 percent and since this is a closed loop if I'm increasing the inventory in this tank the inventory in this tank would decrease which is what we see here so this used to be about 50 52 percent when we started and it's down to about 26 percent so that's enough about the the process and the dynamics uh, demonstrated by this simple process with this process running what I want to do now is to demonstrate different features of this uh, operator training simulator as I said before you can start and stop simulation uh, you can run or you can freeze the simulation uh, you can run the simulation uh, real time which is RT factor of 1 or you can run the simulation faster than real time how fast does the simulation run depends on the complexity of the process that you're running as well as the computer that this uh, system is running on at this point I am logged in as an instructor uh, just uh, uh, for my information here on the lower left side here it tells me what is the last alarm that triggered uh, there are no active unacknowledged alarms uh, this was the last alarm that fired a few minutes ago we'll come back to the alarms feature it just shows the local time here okay so now the simulation is running various features of the Prodine simulator includes uh, ways to uh, give users different access level and since I am actually logged in here as an instructor I do not have privilege uh, to add or delete or change the privileges of the users but with the system manager access I can certainly add users here with the model options uh, there are two things here uh, if my process was fairly complicated requiring multiple graphics all of those graphics would be listed here and this is where I decide which of those graphics would be uh, the first graphics I see when I start the model so this is what they call default display if I have 10 or 20 graphics I could select which of those graphics would be my default display here I would add the email address of the people that I want to send my reports to uh, right now it, the reports would go only to the one email address called support at engineers.cc uh, the instructor would typically add his email address here and uh, then he would automatically receive email uh, reports of all the uh, all the exercises and all the students uh, in his uh, inbox um, we have uh, of course print is normal print uh, displays uh, if you have multiple displays you can actually select a display from here uh, I think this is a, a display that somebody had created for real-time trends um, again this is just a display it looks different uh, but uh, it's uh, it's the same concept here uh, the graphics can uh, we can have multiple graphics multiple displays here okay so I'm going back to my process display uh, graphics package is also very powerful uh, however since I'm logged in here as an instructor I don't have access to the graphics package here that I wanted to demonstrate to you but we'll do it separately uh, trending uh, we have two types of trending real-time trending and historical trending uh, real-time trending is just that it's real-time which is right here uh, only when I go to this trend display is when I start seeing more values coming in more trends coming in and again within this one here we have the same uh, uh, similar features in terms of scrolling left and right uh, putting a zoom box around a particular part of the 
the trend and of course you can put the cursor wherever you want and it will show me the value of this val variable uh, so if I put the cursor here it will show me the value of lic102.pv uh, right here okay so uh, that's the trending display we also have historical trends and let's look at again the levels now this is a historical trend so uh, it of, of course goes back in time quite a bit uh, it can go back in this case a few months uh, depending on the data that is accumulated on this particular computer uh, you can look at it in 3D you can look at it in two dimension if you were to look at it in 3D you can look at it at different angles uh, just uh, different ways to look at the same trend data you can export the data in a tabular form to any any spreadsheet type software uh, you can actually export that to Excel or anything else uh, that's the trending you want to you want to see what, what okay the next feature we are going to look at is alarms uh, alarms uh, as they fire they would show up here and in this case uh, I guess a few minutes ago we had this uh, high level in the tank uh, I can select the alarm I can acknowledge the uh, the alarm uh, there is also a way to configure the alarm but that requires a different access level um, so that's the alarms uh, malfunctions is a very important part of any operator training simulators uh, you should be able to malfunction or fail different uh, parts of the process or different things in a plant uh, similar to the type of uh, failures that you would encounter uh, in a real plant uh, so uh, uh, that's what we are going to do uh, we are going to look at the the possible malfunctions here uh, in this case the valves transmitters pumps and exchangers are a part of what we call generic malfunctions uh, all valves in your process are listed here and they are automatically configured uh, for different types of failures so you select the valve that you want to fail LV102 for example you can enable the actuator failure or you can introduce a leakage in that valve uh, similarly the transmitters and again all of these instruments that we have in the process they have transmitters uh, the transmitters can be failed uh, in this case a couple of different ways uh, you can hold the value or you can introduce an offset uh, you, for the pumps uh, you can also fail the pumps uh, in this case there's only one type of failure available for the pumps uh, just the total failure of a pump and exchangers have uh, fouling on the tube side or the shell side as possible malfunctions so instructor can actually introduce any of these malfunctions at any time all he has to do is select the valve select the malfunction he wants enable this one and then the process would respond uh, similar to what he would expect to see in the real plant so the operator who is being trained he needs to keep an eye on this process and similar to what he would see in the real plant uh, look at all the variables and if they don't make any sense because something has failed in the real plant then he should be ready uh, to take the corrective action for example if the pump failed uh, this green button would still show as pump running however if he sees that the flow has dropped to zero uh, then he should he would possibly suspect that the pump has failed and what he would do is take the corrective action and start the the other pump just to keep the process going uh, okay so I've opened the one section a uh, discharge wall I will open the section wall at this point and um, I will also start the pump 
okay so even if the other pump has failed which we have not really failed it but right now uh, because we have not introduced any malfunction uh, we have two pumps running in parallel uh, resulting in a higher discharge pressure requiring a reduced opening of this valve to get the same flow so the output of this controller would decrease so uh, the point is that the dynamic response you would see in case of a, a malfunction scenario would be same as what you would see in the real plant and the operator needs to be ready to take the corrective actions and keep the plant running in a safe manner event monitor simply logs everything that you do everything that happens in the plant it's logged and um, uh, this becomes a part uh, of your record uh, there is in the new version of roda and there is going to be a button here that allows you to export the events to an automatic exercise so the events would be converted to an automatic exercise uh, which is what i'm trying to show you now so here is uh, one particular exercise that was uh, configured by someone uh, this exercise has a uh, number of steps uh, different things happening at at different time uh, after 10 seconds you load the snapshot after 50 second you introduce a malfunction after 120 seconds you disable the malfunctions you can actually have any collection of these steps here you can have as many exercises as you want you can have as many steps in an exercise as you want you can add steps you can delete steps you can modify steps so instead of 120 seconds uh, i could modify this step and um, uh, change that one to okay uh, i can instead of 120 seconds i say i want that to happen at 115 seconds uh, and and that it simply changes to 115 so if i wanted to rearrange these steps i could do that by simply changing the time when such a step uh, is taken um you can have multiple exercises all you have to do is select the exercise that you want to run uh, select the the play button and things will happen automatically for you as you can see one of the alarms have fired um, this one uh, is same uh, the high level Uh, in a uh, in the tank, uh, I think it's still trying to settle down uh, at 75. So it goes up and down, but ultimately it will settle down uh, at 75. The last feature I want to show you is a performance monitor, <coughs> which actually works in conjunction with the exercises feature that I just demonstrated. Uh, if you have multiple operators that you want to train, uh, you uh, you would generate or you would create a scenario on automatic exercise uh, make each student go through the same exercise and while they are going through that exercise you as an instructor would keep track of their performance uh, the performance of this student is recorded in a quantitative manner uh, let me reset the score here uh, to 100 so everyone starts with a score of 100 and depending on how they perform uh, their score would remain close to 100 or it could drop below um, 85 or 70% or whatever the way it works is this um, i'm the instructor i would identify certain key parameters in my process and for each parameter i would set low limit and a high limit and a corresponding weight factor for that particular variable so for different weight factors and different high and low limits of these variables this is just one table and i could create as many tables as i want uh, for these variables the student is expected to keep these variables within these high and low limits the student will not be able to see these tables he only sees his score and i'm going to start recording this as of this moment he would only see his score in the lower left hand corner of the screen he doesn't see the details of the the performance criteria 
However, since we are logged in here as an instructor, we can see what is going on. And as you can see, certain variables are outside the range. Uh, this variable, which is the temperature, uh, is outside the range that I limit that I had set uh, between 20 and 26, and it looks like it is just outside uh, 26, uh, maybe 26 point something. And it's been like this one for 16 or 17 seconds. Similarly, the level uh, LIC 102, uh, it is at 75.3 percent now, and it is outside the limit of 40 and 60. The longer you stay outside the limit, the more you are penalized. And one would wonder why my score is not going down. The reason why my score is not going down is because the weight factor on these two parameters, even though they are outside the range, the weight factor set here is zero. If I was to change this weight factor to something other than zero, then this will result in a lower score here, less than 100%. And since I'm actually recording right now, I cannot really change anything. So what I'll do temporarily is disable. I will go here and change the set, uh, the uh, the weight factor to just some non-zero value, let's say 0.1. And if I start logging again, because of this uh, non-zero weight factor, and the fact that this level is outside the range, I will see that my score is going down or has gone down. Uh, the longer it stays uh, outside the range, uh, the lower the score would be. However, in this case, I think the algorithm has uh, uh, has certain limits uh, uh, placed on that, that particular uh, variable. So this variable is not having any additional impact on the score. But the point is, you can have as many variables as you want whatever limits you want and the longer the student stays outside the range the lower the score. If he realizes looking at the score here in the lower left corner that he is really doing something wrong if he realizes that the score is low or even decreasing what he would be expected to do is to very quickly look at the process and realize that some of these variables are outside the range that has been given to him. So he would immediately come here and uh, take the corrective action and in this case change the set point from 75% uh, to 50%. And well in this case it will indeed take some time for the the level to come back to 50%. Uh, ultimately when the level is within the range of 40 to 60% then his score here will begin to increase. So that's the way one can um, keep track of the student's performance using this feature called performance monitor. Those are all the features of Prodyne. We can do custom simulation. We also have a collection of uh, generic ready-made standard models uh, as well. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for your time.